Should all Christians speak in tongues? I've been told that before. I've been told, in fact, that I don't even have the fullness of the Spirit unless I do speak in tongues. But is that true? Is that actually what the Bible says? Join us today to find out. All right, good morning. Welcome to our Acts in 10-ish series. We're glad you're joining us. We're working our way through Acts in small little bite-sized pizzas. So last week we talked about the day of Pentecost. It finally happened. And we saw the Holy Spirit show up as we see in verse one. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was getting them, giving them utterance. Now, here is the problem with this verse, is that we get so hung up on the fact that everyone was speaking in tongues. So first I have to tell you my funny little story about speaking in tongues. There was a mouse and he was in a little mouse hole and he wanted to get something to eat, but he was afraid there might be a big cat right outside. So he puts his ear to, to where, his, where he can hear on the other side of the wall and he hears a dog barking. And so he thinks, well, there can't be a cat out there because there's a big old dog. So he goes out of the mouse hole and is promptly caught by a cat and the little mouse is eaten. The cat says this, well, it's a good thing I know how to speak in tongues. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was super cute, but here's the deal. We need to kind of dive into a topic like this, but the problem is, is it's very controversial. It just is. And when we, when we dive into a divisive topic, uh, I'm kind of in a no-win situation today because we have people watching our Bible study from all different churches, all different denominations, um, and some of you watching are just Bible people. Some of you are charismatic Pentecostal people. And each one of you hold to your beliefs very, very dearly. And I totally understand that. But this is what I'm going to ask you is that when it comes to this idea of speaking in tongues, I want you to kind of put your church bias aside. And I want you to look and see what the Bible says, what the Bible says in context. We'll be doing this for the next couple of weeks. So my first question to you is this, how many of you speak in tongues? Like, you know, is it something you do? Do you pray in tongues, speak in tongues? Have maybe you like me never spoke in tongues? Because people tell me, well, you're missing something, Lisa. They shake their heads and they, they act like I'm like a less than Christian because I have never actually spoken in tongues. So that just brings us to this question, like what is speaking in tongues? What, what does that even mean? Is it a foreign language? Is it like an angelic language? Should everyone speak in tongues? Can I learn how to speak in tongues? Like what is this? So let's start here. First of all, we need to understand that as a Christian, there's lots of things in the Bible that, that some are essentials and some are non-essentials. Now, some essentials are the Bible is the only word of God. It's our final authority. Nothing is ever to be added or taken away from that. We know that um, the Trinity is an essential. You have to believe the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God in three persons. Uh, you have to believe essentials like that Jesus was born of a virgin, sinless, died on a cross for our sins, rose from the dead. Uh, we have to believe that Jesus is the only way to God, not, not like... Uh, you know, you can be a good person or you can just join a church. Those are essentials of the faith. But there are non-essentials. There's big arguments, you know, Calvinists versus Arminian. So we're talking like, did God choose me or did I choose God? Like, and, and there's a big debate going on over that from, from many, you know, believers who are very strong believers. Um, will there be a rapture? And if so, will it be a pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib? How old is the earth? Billions of years or thousands of years? Should I go to church on Saturday or Sunday? Should I drink alcohol or gamble? Should we have music in church or not? Should we have a drum or a violin? Like which one works? Should we serve communion every Sunday or maybe once a month? So you see all of these, these are all non-essentials. They're all pretty much preferences. 
Like you can come down on one side or the other of those. And um, for me, I have this perfect idea of the church. Like I get there, Mercy Me is up front singing. Uh, communion is, is, you know, the piano is playing softly every week and it's quiet so I can actually focus on Jesus. Uh, I want to hear a great sermon come straight out of the Bible, like verse by verse. Let's do that. I don't want someone to, you know, pass the bucket. I want to be able to, you know, have a place to put my tithe in. Uh, and, and then that's just a personal preference. So does it matter how you do communion? Does it matter how you take people's money? Does it matter whether the music is rock and roll or, or, or whether it's like c country? And the answer is no, those are all actually non-essentials. And speaking in tongues is going to fall under that non-essential category. It's not a salvation issue. In fact, it's a spiritual gift is what it is. And what we have is we have pastor friends that we know. Some of them speak in tongues. Some of them pray in tongues. Others of them don't at all. And we don't divide with them. This made me laugh. One day in the South Pacific, a Navy ship sees smoke coming out of three um, huts that are on this island. No one knew that anything was on the island. So they get there and, and this man comes running out. He'd been shipwrecked there for a long time. And he said, oh my gosh, I'm so glad you're here. I've been alone on this island for like five years. And the captain of the boat looked at him and said, well, if you're alone, why do I see three huts? And the survivor said, oh, that's easy. I live in one and I go to church in the other. And he goes, well, what about the third hut? And he goes, well, that's where I used to go to church. <laughs> because he was probably having a disagreement over something like speaking in tongues, okay? So as for today and probably our next lesson, my job is not to gonna be to come against either group, but I want us to open the Bible and I want us to see what the Bible actually has to say about this. Because remember, the Bible has to be our final authority. Not what your church teaches or your pastor says, but, but what does the Bible says? And I say this, in context. Because so many times we talk about a subject like speaking in tongues and, and churches, depending on what church you are, you're going to pull out a verse, you're going to take it out of context, you're going to show it up on the screen and, and, it's not, and, and you're going to say, this is why we take this view. But in context, it doesn't even mean that. Okay, So you have to be very, very careful of things like that. So even though it's a non-essential, we need to be knowledgeable about what the Bible says about this. So if someone says... If you don't speak in tongues, you know, man, you, sh you should do that. You, you know, you might not be saved. You can say that is not true. Okay, so we want to be knowledgeable about this. And then on the other hand, we need to give grace. We need to give grace to those that don't actually agree with us. John 17, 23 says this, I in them and you in me, may they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Jesus wants to remind us that we're all on the same team, regardless of non-essentials. We went to a, um, a ministry outreach thing. We were barbecuing for this, this group of, they were skaters, okay? And um, the guys putting this on, they were literally like all tattooed up and, and um, they, you know, they were ex-drug addicts. And, and hearing their testimonies was so amazing. And one of the guys is like, God showed up to me in this bright light. And, and I'm listening to this and I'm thinking, well, God never showed up in my life in a bright light. And, and these guys are speaking in tongues and praying in tongues. And, and, and I, I look at all this and I think, well, God seems to speak to them differently than me. And honestly, sometimes that really frustrates me because I can start feeling like, well, they have something that I don't have. But then I have to stop and remember, what does the Bible say? about this issue of speaking in tongues. There's a girl by the name of Maria. She was a really strong believer, but she had joined this, uh, this, this Bible study group where it was like a special prayer group, prayer meeting. But in this prayer group, all the people were speaking in tongues, praying in tongues. Now, she, she never got that gift, so she never was able to do this. But the problem is, is that everyone in that group made her feel like she was this horrible Christian. Uh, they started praying for her, laying hands on her so that she might be filled with the Spirit and so that she could pray in tongues or speak in tongues, and nothing ever happened. 
Everyone ought to have the gift, is what she was told. Speaking in tongues is a sign of increased holiness, they would tell Maria. And she was a mess. Like she was a mess and she felt all this guilt, like what's wrong with me? Why can't I speak in tongues? But the problem is, is that that's actually just not even biblical, all right? You're not more holy if you speak in tongues. And what happens is when you're around people and they tell you things like that, you feel like a spiritual failure. So Maria goes to her aunt, who is a great woman of faith, and, and, and Maria is telling her, like, all these people are telling me that I'm pretty much less than a Christian if I don't speak in tongues. And her aunt was so wise. She said, the Holy Spirit doesn't work that way. The Holy Spirit has been at work in your life ever since the day you were born. It's the Spirit of God who, who taught you to have faith in Jesus. It's the Spirit of God who has given you your own specific spiritual gifts. Speaking in tongues is not one of them. The Holy Spirit does not have copy machine up there just you know, making copies of, of every person that he, want, you know, he wants this, you to be this way and everyone to be just like you. It doesn't work that way. The Holy Spirit gives each one of us something different because every one of us has a spiritual gift and it is to serve God. He is the one that's the giver of gifts. Some people have the gift of service, some the gift of administration, some the gift of helping people, some the gift of prophecy, giving, teaching, wisdom, faith, miracles, healing, speaking in tongues, but there's some, there's some parameters around that. Another one of the gifts is interpreting tongues. If someone is speaking in tongues, there has to be an interpreter. But the problem is, is that what if Maria has the gift of helping people and she goes to this, this prayer meeting? We don't see her telling everyone, well, if you want to be more holy, you need to have the gift of, you need to have the gift of, of helping people like I do. I can't go to a prayer meeting and say, you know what? Y'all need to have the gift of teaching like I do. Otherwise, you're not as holy. That's not true. But people do it all the time when it comes to speaking in tongues. I don't understand that. Because the overarching reason that we all have different spiritual gifts is that we all have, have, have people around us that need to hear about Jesus. And so whatever our specific gift is, God has placed us with these people so that we can tell them about Jesus. Whatever spiritual gift you have, it isn't to promote yourself. It's not to make you look more spiritual than other people. Like, look at me, I have wisdom. Look at me, I, have, uh, I, have, uh, I can speak in tongues, I can pray in tongues, and you can't. Look at me, I'm a teacher. You, no, it doesn't work that way. Any spiritual gift you have is to promote Jesus, not to make yourself feel more holy than other people. But speaking in tongues isn't the point when we get to this chapter and these verses. The point is that the gospel, the good news of Jesus, was going to be heard in other languages. The Holy Spirit was allowing these people at Pentecost to speak languages that they didn't know because they wanted to share the good news about Jesus. He died on the cross. He rose from the dead. That was a really, really important thing that needed to get to people who spoke in other languages. We've seen this before in, in the Tower of Babel in Genesis 11. Look at this. At one time, all the people of the world spoke the same language and used the same words. As the people migrated to the east, they found a plain in the land of Babylonia and settled there. They began saying to each other, let's make bricks and harden them with fire. Uh, in this region, bricks were used instead of stone and tar was used for mortar. Then they said, come, let's build a great city for ourselves with a tower that reaches into the sky. They will make us famous and keep us from being scattered all over the world. They're like, we all have one language. Let's just all be together and we're going to build a tower and we're going to be really, really important. But the Lord came down to look at the city and the tower the people were building. Verse 7 said, come, let's go down and confuse the people with different languages. Then they won't be able to understand each other. In that way, the Lord scattered them all over the world and they stopped building the city. Man in his rebellion made this Tower of Babel. They wanted their independence from God. They were proud of, they all spoke the same language. They all could accomplish this together. They didn't need God for anything. And God broke that momentum of pride by confusing their language. So on the day of Pentecost, people were hearing the gospel in their own language. 
And that was made, made available through the power of the Holy Spirit. So in this case, you see uh, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, this would be a foreign language. Now, we'll see this more in next week's lesson, but look at verse 6. And when the sound occurred, the crowd came together and were bewildered because each of them was hearing them speak in his own language. So when you take a Bible verse in context, you say, okay, this particular speaking in tongues where there is, is a language, is, a, is someone else's language that maybe you don't know. Because remember, the point is that they're trying to get the gospel out into the world, but everybody doesn't speak the same language. If you go back to verse 3, it says this, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterances. So we're going to stop there today, but just so you kind of get a, an idea of what's going on here, that, that when it's talking about speaking in tongues in Acts 2, it's literally talking about a language. And please do not ever feel like you are less than if you don't have the gift of speaking in tongues. Because actually Paul eventually says that in, in, in 1 Corinthians, he says that speaking in tongues is the least of all the gifts. So please do not let anyone ever feel that, that you are a less than Christian or you're not holy enough to speak in tongues because that isn't true. What's going on here is a spiritual gift of being able to speak in a different language that you don't know. And like I said, it's all to promote Jesus out into the world. So hope that helps. Have a good day.